Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bifir. An unexpected bit of additional context that we got out of the new exotic Encore mission was a look into the current leadership structures surrounding the Dread, the Shadow Legion, and the Scion Rebels. These groups were previously bound by their allegiances to Kallus and the Witness, but since both of them are now deceased and the final shape has been prevented, these forces have been left somewhat rudderless. In any estimations, the question has become an obvious one of who takes over in this power vacuum. Encore has shown us the first hints at who the first mover might be, but it also speaks to the deeper motivations of the forces of the Dread and the Shadow Legion generally, and also gives us a hint at what might be going on with the Scions. Today, we're going to be looking into them in particular, and we're going to be extrapolating some possibilities from what we've seen thus far since the final shape. But first, a word from our sponsors at Advanced GG. Advanced GG have been longtime sponsors of the channel, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you know them by now. In particular, though, there's some really exciting new developments that might interest some of you who use their sleep formula. Some of you might remember as well that we actually have our own custom version of this flavor called Lord Daddy's Lullaby, which comes with these nice earthy hibiscus flavors that'll help you get some much needed rest. You can buy it from the Advanced GG site as well as their focus and energy formulas. However, that's not all. I spoke to the Advanced to GG team, and they're doing a special deal. For a limited time, there will be a bundle available at my link down below, where you can get the sleep formula bundled together with one of my custom desk mats at no extra cost. All of this and more is available through Advanced GG, so buy now at the link down below in the description and use code LAWDADDY with a capital L and a capital D to get 10% off your purchase. Thanks again to Advanced GG for sponsoring this video. Anyway, back to the lore. There's a lot of interesting dynamics to this situation, so let's start at the top. Our story really begins back in Witch Queen with the Vox Obscura mission. Here, we not only obtained the exotic Dead Messenger grenade launcher, but we also learned of a powerful scion known as Yerix, who was trying to split Keitel's own scion forces and pull them into the service of Kallus and the Witness by instigating psionic propaganda. In particular, we learned the following from the second week of Vox Obscura. This latest message depicts a scene of violence. I see myself. It's the failed attempt on Commander Zavala's life. Through the assassin's eyes, the memory of his death. He rushes at Commander Zavala, and I feel his surprise when your crow steps in his way. He is helpless as I lift him up. Oh, how he fears me. I throw him down. His spine snaps. His organs rupture. Panic and confusion as his life drains away. The last thing he sees is Commander Zavala and me, standing above him, together. Only one Scion left alive would have such intimate knowledge of this. The traitor Yerix. So Yerix was responsible for the assassination attempts on Commander Zavala, which in turn was a response to our destruction of the Almighty, our alliance potentially forming with Keitel, and our actions against the Scions at the Sundial years ago, during the Season of Dawn. Yerix is a figure who's not been touched on much since the lore of Vox Obscura, but we do know that the Scion Rebels have been working alongside the Shadow Legion ever since the time of Witch Queen. She may have been aligned with the Witness's forces, but Yerix and the other Scion Rebels represent an interesting leader now that the Witness has been defeated. What's more, I think she might actually be one of a few commanders who's jockeying for prime leadership positions after the Witness's death. You see, Yurix clearly has control over some of the Shadow Legion's forces, including those that made their incursions in the Encore mission. This includes a few powerful Dread commanders, such as Subjugators and Tormentors. But she's not the only named Scion who's turned up lately in relation to the Shadow Legion. 
We learn more about this thanks to Micah's lost ghost missions. In particular, we learn about a cloned version of Kargan as we dealt with yet another incursion into the Insight Terminus, and this leaves us with a fascinating little bit of extra dialogue regarding who was commanding Kargan. Take a listen. There's no doubt about it, that's Kargan. And he's trying to tap into the Vex network again. I hate to say it, but this might answer a long-standing question I had about Cabal cloning programs. Apparently, they can clone Scions. Wait, this guy's a clone? Gee, you die for just a little while. Whatever's going on, we have to stop him. I'll try and pin down what data he's accessing while I look for Bean's signal. And stay down! I've got Bean's signal. It looks like he's gone deeper into Nessus. It should be easy to follow him. As for what Kargan's clone was doing here, it looks like he was trying to access Vex data on Oxa again. That's the Scion prediction machine, right? Sees the future and branching paths? Future War Cult has something similar. Based on what I'm seeing here, I... I can't be sure they aren't the same thing. The same design. But I don't know how that's possible. Cargan was trying to access the Soul Divisive's research on the Veil as well. I don't understand how all these things are connected. But I can tell where the orders are coming from. A scion named Atzat. And these orders are recent. I think there might be defector branches within the Shadow Legion. One's not loyal to the Witness. And they're trying to pin down potential outcomes. Make plans for what? The event of our success? Maybe. But it looks like something blocked them. But I... I don't know how that's possible. Why? What stopped Kargan? If this log is correct, Maya Sunderesh did. Maya? Well, why does that name sound so familiar? Why don't you and I talk about that offline, Kate? But the Guardian and Ghost track down Bean. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that sounds good. It's worth noting here, a little bit of extra dialogue from the beginning of this mission tells us that these Red Legion are either working under a new Warlord, or alternatively are working on behalf of the Shadow Legion, and it's not confirmed which. That's our first little bit of evidence that we might actually be seeing another Scion who's in command of at least some of the Shadow Legion's forces, in particular Splinter Groups. The Scion mentioned here, of course, is Otzot. A quick reminder for those of you who don't remember, Otzot is a really powerful figure within the Scion's history. A brief overview of her story is that she was a Scion from the time of Kallus' empire, who was free and who was allowed to keep their freedom by Kallus, even though she tried to reconstruct the Scion's Oxa machine. This prediction engine was partially completed under Otzot and was used to coordinate the conspirators of the Midnight Coup, the same coup that deposed Kallus. Otzot has been on Kallus' hit list for a while, and there have been agents loyal to her within the Cabal ranks for a long time. Otzot is a seriously old scion, and she probably represents a primary leader within their ranks. If Otzot is looking to command some of the Shadow Legion, it gives us further notes and clues regarding the nature of their power structure, who now might be involved, and whether the scions are making a play for power generally. But again, I don't think it's that simple. I think both Otsnot and Eurix are swiftly trying to collect and coordinate some of their forces that were once in the Witness's thrall, and they're doing so, I think, for their own ends. This would make them terribly powerful leaders in their own way, and if they were working together, especially with the Paracausal Dread at their command, they would be nigh unstoppable. After all, I think it's only because of the presence of the Dread that Eurix felt comfortable assaulting the core of Nessus in the first place to retrieve the Echo. But behind all of this, there are further implications of what's going on with the Scions. I can't help but ask further questions. Namely, how did Eurix manage to secure an allegiance from the Dread? We've seen the Shadow Legion forces under Scion control, bringing multiple Tormentors and even a Subjugator into the pressing fights of the system. And that implies they must have secured their loyalty somehow. This leads us to a further note that we do not see the Dread forces under Eurix's command and the splinter forces from the Shadow Legion under Otzot working together. 
At least, not yet. Now, there are some possibilities here. The first is that the Scions might be generally trying to make a play here. Something might include, say, the Shadow Legion splinter factions under Otzot, and the main Shadow Legion factions under Eurix, eventually combining and working together. But I don't think that's the way the story is posed. The second possibility I think is far more likely. An interesting contest of power appears to be going on, with the Shadow Legion remnants at the center of the prize. Two Scion commanders are major power players in this conflict. On one side we have Otzot, who's never been a fan of Kallus and has been trying to pry away splinter factions of the Shadow Legion. And on the other side we have Yurix, who's more directly aligned with the Witness and the Dread, and who has inherited the loyalties of the Dread as a commander, by still perhaps believing in the salvation that the Witness promised through the final shape. Both of these Scions are vying for control of the Shadow Legion, and it means that they might actually act as the precursors to a greater conflict within the Scion species generally. It's here that I have to point out a few things that might change the dynamic of this conflict entirely. The first thing is that Keitel's first act as Empress was to grant all Scions Cabal citizenship and to end their enslavement within the Empire. Despite what Kallus said about Otzot being jealous of other Scions, who might also wish for freedom similar to hers, I'm not sure if I necessarily buy that picture entirely. It's possible, but I think Otzot might have a reason to align herself with Keitel because of that first decree. If Otzot genuinely is trying to pry away Shadow Legion remnants in a bid to support Scion independence, then maybe her and Keitel might be more aligned than we initially suspected. That's very much speculative, but it makes you wonder if there is a reason why she's pulling away so many forces from the Shadow Legion, even doing so when the Witness was still alive. A second thing to note is this. Whilst we can speculate about Otzot's links with the Scions and the Shadow Legion, there is a lot more we can say about Yurix, on the other hand. Yurix isn't just connected to the Dread by Callus and the Witness. There is another figure within Scion history that connects them, connecting in particular the Dread to whatever remnants of Scion command there might be. A connection that is made by a much more natural successor for the forces of the Witness. And that's Nezarek. Nezarek at one point had a terrible grip over Scion society and became a religious icon to them. A terrible one at that. We learned from the memories of Acacia and the recordings of Nezarek's cult that Scions would be taken from their families and ritually sacrificed to Nezarek, the final god of pain, who would indulge in that pain and suffering, leeching strength from the death of powerful Scionic individuals. Nezarek has also been in command of individuals from the Shadow Legion before. He apparently tormented the Cabal Detachment that we fought in the Root of Nightmares raid to the point that many of them, including their commanders, were hearing voices. I mention this because although he's dead, we have many moments throughout the game that show us that he may not truly be dead at all, and that if he is intrinsically linked with an idea within Destiny's universe, he might truly be functionally invincible. You can't kill the idea of fear. You can't kill the idea of pain. Nezarek has been killed before, but has returned to life given the right surplus of resources and power. Even when he was dead, he was able to reach out to his cultists and his potential aspirants using whispers that drove them either mad or into his service, oftentimes both. So the idea of his return isn't that far-fetched, especially if a certain scion was able to acquire, I don't know, say a fragment of both light and dark energy. After all, Nezarek's original powers were based in darkness and with the light of the Traveler striking essence, he was brought back to life, with both light and dark coalescing within his form. And what is it that is around now in the system that's a rogue form of power that everyone is chasing and that also contains both the power of light and dark? That's right, it's the Echoes. If Nezarex remains on the essence pyramid of the Witness were infused with the power of an Echo, his return might be a very feasible possibility. All this is to say that we might have a better understanding of what role the Shadow Legion might play in the near future, and who is going to be vying for the leadership over its members. They have multiple leaders trying to split off 
various parts of them and vie for their loyalty, and one might have links to a being that is truly capable of commanding the Dread. The future of the Dread has also not been well determined. We need to let things unfold and see where things go. But that's all from me for now. Thank you for bearing with me through the slightly croakier voice. I think I needed to give myself a little bit more vocal rest after GCX. Regardless, you can expect more content from me in the coming weeks. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. And of course, also be sure to leave your own thoughts down below in the comments section. Do you think that Eurix and Otsart are aligned or opposed? That's what I want to know. And also, do you think that there's any place where Nezarek is manipulating the elements of Eurix's forces that have command over the Dread? Another interesting tangent for you to think on. Of course, if you want more stories from the world of Destiny and beyond, go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. But as per usual, know that your viewership, as always, is quite enough for me. And that in the meantime, my name has been My Name is Bife. Rodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.